it was originally a figment of J.K. Rowling's imagination, but the magical sport of Quidditch, of course made famous by the Harry Potter series, is being taken to the next level in the UK. Students at the University of Bristol have established the country's first league for the fast-growing sport. Yesterday, the Brizzle Puffs had their debut game, and they're here. We've got Josh, we've got Nicole, and we've got Alistair. Um, nice to see you all. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. With props as well, I notice. Yeah. Um, just explain a little bit about Quidditch, Nicole, and, and how you've managed to take it from people flying around in Harry Potter to, to playing it on a field. Well, I think, obviously, Harry Potter is a very popular book um, for both children and adults alike, and people wanted to transform this really amazing element of the book into a game. Mm -hmm. um, but I think now it's really become a game in its own right. Mm -hmm. um, people often sort of slightly try and distance it from Harry Potter, yeah. um, which is amazing. You know, we're having our first league. We had a World Cup in Germany in the summer. Uh, it's, really, it's really making its own way as its own sport, which is brilliant. Um, so, Alistair, just, just to explain what you're holding, because you've got what looked like a, a deflated volleyball, <laughs> a, a deflated basketball, and and a, a tennis ball and a sock. Um, yeah, so these are the balls in Quidditch. This is what's called a bludger. Uh, if anyone's watched Harry Potter, they'll know what this is. Unfortunately, it's not as magical as it is in the book. Uh, it's just a dodgeball. Uh, this is the quaffle, uh, which uh, chases past between themselves, trying to score through the opponent's hoop. Okay. And this is the golden snitch. Uh, ah. This is actually tucked in a, the back of a person's shorts. OK. Uh, and then the seekers on pitch try and grab it out from behind them. But the snitch's job is basically not to get caught. So they'll throw people to the ground. Oh, I see. They'll try and rip your broom off you. Basically, just do anything to last as long as possible. Josh, rip, rip your broom off you. That's the one thing that's missing. Yeah, I know. Where's the broom? <laughs> Well, we had a mishap on the train. Um, <laughs> you left it behind. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you if you whistle or click your fingers, does it not just fly Maybe, back yeah, magically? Accio, accio, isn't it? Yeah. Accio. <laughs> this is this is Harry Potter having a go at it. I mean, how many have you got now in your Quidditch league? How many teams? So there are seven teams in our league for this year. Okay. Um, and they start. They go from all the way from Swansea down to Falmouth. Right, and one of them's Worcester. I quite like the name, the, the Worcester Sorcerers. I thought that was quite a clever, <laughs> clever name that they've come up with. Um, Alistair, Mike Bushell had a go. I mean, we, we've seen that. You know, this is the Harry Potter, the, the magical J.K. Rowling one. Um, we've got some pictures of Mike Bushell having a go. Maybe you could just. Ex oh, here, you are. I was going to say explain it, but have a listen to Mike in his own inimitable style. Here he is. So I've got the ball one-handed. I've got to avoid balls being thrown at me. I'm the chaser. I've got to try and score or pass. It's not only the tackles that can stop you, but beaters on the other team throwing balls at you. If you're hit by one of these bludgeons, you go back to your own line. But I got all the way through, only to oh, miss. Open goal. So how does that work then, um, Alistair, in terms of, have you got a referee on the pitch? Because it looked quite chaotic. Um, yeah, obviously, because there's so many balls on pitch, is that normally have three referees and then also two goal refs who okay. say whether the ball went through the hoops or not. So it can be very chaotic on a Quidditch pitch. But luckily, the head ref's got a whistle, and every time you hear two <laughs> shots, it just brooms down, stop where you are, and play stops for a little bit. And, and Nicole, um, is, it, is it mixed? Is it men and women can play together? Or? Yeah, so it's not just men and women. We call it a mixed gender sport, and that's all genders. So some people identify as non-binary, okay. so neither gender, okay. um, or male, or female, um, or transgender. Any gender is accepted in Quidditch. We have a gender rule. So a maximum of four players on the pitch at any time can be of one particular gender. I see. OK. And Josh, what do, uh, what do all the other students at Bristol University make of this? Oh, they love it. It's something which you kind of... Sometimes it's not the most well-known sport, but as soon as you tell them about it, everybody wants to know. Um, it's brilliant. Um, fascinating. And I bet it gets you fit as well, and you, you all have Definitely. fun playing it. Thank Definitely. you so much. I know you went to lots of trouble to get to us, particularly you, Nicole. You, you <laughs> travelled through the night after working last night. So thank you very much indeed to Alistair, to Nicole, and to Josh. It's lovely Thanks to so see much. you all. And good thank luck with your quidditching. Brilliant. Thank you. Now, uh, Oliver Twist uh, in London, Wuthering Heights.